Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Conversations with Coaches podcast. This one is a special one, I think, in my my esteemed opinion as the host. This is only the second time I've had someone back on for a third time. And quite, I mean, you know, this is maybe wishful thinking, probably not, because I think we have great conversations, hopefully third of many more. <laughs> I feel like, I mean, if I had my druthers, it would be like a monthly check-in. But, you know, maybe maybe come summertime, we'll be having Paul Glover back on again. But for now... Times three, Paul Glover is back with us. If you don't, you might remember, you probably have listened to his previous episodes. They were fantastic, again, in my my opinion. <laughs> but if you forget who Paul is, Paul is a C-suite performance coach with over 20 years of experience as a federal court trial lawyer. He's a passionate storyteller who believes in the power of narrative to influence and educate in the business world, personal life, and even courtrooms. He's also a member of the Forbes Coaches Council and author of the book Work Quake, we had some very contentful conversations a couple of times last year in 2022, and this is the first of our conversations in 2023. Paul, it's really good to have you back. It's really good to see you. <laughs> Kevin, it's really good to see you. And again, it's an honor to be back. Glad to know that I'm a three-timer here. Uh, it certainly was an enjoyable conversation the first two times, and I intend to uh, to keep it that way for our third. Well, let me let me tee you up with a meaty topic that I know you're going to have a lot to speak on, and I'm excited to hear you speak on too and talk with you about. You have a relatively recent uh, TEDx talk um, that has, uh, well, it's an idea worth sharing, as you put it. And so, why don't you talk a little bit about that? And let's just let's bat that back and forth and see where we go. Sure. the uh, the The title of the TEDx is uh, "Everyone Needs a Fool in Their Life," and it's a personal experience, uh, as most TEDx's are, uh, and it occurred to me as I look back on my life and both the successes, but especially the failures, that if I'd had a fool in my life, uh, my life would have turned out very differently. And by the way, the, the definition of a fool, which confuses people, is very medieval. Uh, anyone who takes a look at the fool who is sitting at the foot of the throne of the king immediately believes that the fool was a entertainer. Uh, a gesture. He would jump up, caper about, sing a song, tell a joke, and sit down. Uh, that was not the role of the fool. Uh, in medieval times, because the king was anointed by divine right, if you challenged the king, you committed the crime of heresy. And heresy was punishable by death. So there was no one who was in a position to tell the king when they were making a mistake to identify their blind spots and their triggers. Uh, the fool, though, was an exception to the rule because he was viewed as being insane. That's why they dressed the way they dressed and acted the way they acted. Insane people were not held to the same rule about heresy. They were nuts. They didn't know any better. So the reality was that the counterbalance to divine right was the establishment of the role of the fool as a trusted advisor to the king. And therefore, he had the psychological safety to tell the king the truth hmm. and not get killed. Hmm. Uh, that's some, that is something that I believe more than ever leaders in particular, but everyone in general, need today. We, we need someone that we trust and respect who has the psychological safety to tell us when we are making a mistake. Uh, because unfortunately, we all have blind spots that are inherent in our personality. And blind spots by their definition cannot be seen by us. Uh, I love the concept of being self-aware, except when you look in the mirror, you see a predetermined image. Mm -hmm. It is not the real you. Uh, the real you is only seen by other people. Uh, we all wear a mask. Uh, we, we, try to, we, try to, we try to put out in society the way we want to be seen. Uh, and also, we are often ignorant about the triggers that we have that will generate bad behavior, destructive behavior. Hmm. So the concept is that we need to recognize that, and leaders in particular do, and find a fool give that fool the psychological safety to tell us the truth or tell them the truth and then be willing to listen to that truth and hopefully recognize the triggers and stop the bad behavior uh this is a concept that i work hard at with my uh, my coaching clients because i act as their fool 
Uh, I consider that to be the job of any good coach is that uh, you need to know your client well enough to be able to say, because I know you and your personality, when you tell me this is what you're going to do, I need to have the safety to tell you you're wrong. And mm -hmm. let's explore why you're wrong. Because until we see our blind spots through somebody else's eyes, they identify them for us and understand the triggers that generate the behavior, we continue to make the same mistake over and over again. Uh, that's it. That, that is the idea we're sharing. And it sounds simple, except it is extraordinarily difficult, especially for successful people, to take that idea and make it worthwhile, embrace it. Uh, it actually takes failure. Mm -hmm. when, when you have failed and you're struggling with why, then we have to open ourselves up to do two things. First, embrace the failure. And embracing the failure means we learn from it. Mm -hmm. But also to understand that if we don't do something that we weren't doing before, we will commit the same mistake inevitably. Mm -hmm. It's a blind spot. And believe me, we don't see our blind spots. Other people do. And other people figure out how to trigger us. So when it comes to being manipulated, this is where we fall within the category of manipulation. Someone knows our blind spots. Someone knows our trigger. They frame the situation so that they will press that trigger, pull that trigger, and cause us to react the way they want, mm -hmm. often to our own detriment. Uh, so that's where we're. That's where I'm at with this, and I put together a. Uh, I put together the TEDx talk, but I also put together a workshop because I think there are three elements of this. One is, you have to recognize the need that to to have a fool. The mindset has got to be there. Uh, the second thing is, you have to provide the psychological safety before you go out and find a fool. Where are we going to find our fools? Uh, our fools are our friends family, uh, could be co-workers or coaches, someone we trust and respect that will perform this. And by the way, when I went out and found one, my, my first fool was my wife. <laughs> uh, and when we first had this discussion, she refused. She said, I'm not going to be your fool because I know how you are. Mm. And I know that when you when I tell you something you don't want to hear, I know how you're going to react. Mm. And I don't want to deal with that. And so we had to reach a pact where I would I we, we developed a system where when she would tell me something that I didn't like and didn't want to hear, we would then take a break. Smart. Because I needed to get away from the conversation and then self reflect. Mm -hmm. Then I could come back and have it. And she was brutal. Uh, <laughs> and I, I love her to death. But I'll tell you what she could she would piss me off in a heartbeat. And then we would have to break him. But but legitimately, I respected her, I trusted her. And she saw me a way that I didn't see me. And she saw those blind spots. And she saw how defensive I defensive I would get how I would have a knee jerk reaction. So when someone pulled one of those or pulled one trigger. So it was a it was a, a revelation that had nothing to do with self reflection. I was I was very much into self reflection, but I, it doesn't go deep enough. It can't. So so anyway, that that's where I'm at with this. And so the workshop is mindset that you realize you need a fool. Then you have to provide the psychological safety and then go out and find a fool. They have to be willing to do this, which means they have to believe that you're serious about what you want, because this is about transformation. And transformation is really hard. Mm -hmm. uh, and to do this, to be serious about it, first you have to commit to the experience because it's not a, it's not a pleasant one. Then you have to convince people that you're serious about it and you will allow them the, the opportunity to be a fool. But then I believe there's a payback. Then you have to become a fool. Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. If you have yeah. the gift of a fool in your life who helps you, you need to find someone to be a fool for. Yeah. Uh, gratitude, we talked about gratitude just briefly. That This is a part of gratitude. Being grateful does not allow you not to make, be then react to being grateful. Mm -hmm. You know, the concept of having empathy is fantastic. Boy, I really feel empathetic for you. 
the, the, the reality is if you don't have compassion connected to empathy, mm -hmm. because compassion is about not only do I recognize the issue you're dealing with, I'm going to do something to help you overcome the issue. So exactly. I find it interesting that, that we, we're all about empathy, but are we really about compassion? Because compassion requires that we now do something positive to help. Mm -hmm. Taking action. And that's, isn't that always, well, maybe not the hardest step, but it's, I, it, it, it gets overlooked so frequently when we're talking about something like empathy, people feel like empathy is sort of an endpoint where if they can just connect with the feelings and thoughts of another person, it's like, ah, okay. It's almost like, ah, I've read that book. Okay, have you put any of the things you learned from that book into action? Are you, are you, is, is that being expressed in any meaningful way that's affecting the kind of change that you've seen in your life and would like to share with other people? And that's, I feel like that's such an important distinction to make and something. I'm, there were so many things that in, in your presentation that you just, that you just gave that I like, there were at least like a dozen different points. Where I was like, oh, yes, and that, and that. And there's so many different things to talk about, which is why it's such a great subject to really focus on. And I love, before, well, I'm going to ask you again at the very end, but you mentioned that you're creating a workshop for this. Is there like, I'm going to ask you for the link again at the end of the, of the, of the episode, but like, where is, where can people find out more about this workshop around this? We'll find out by going to uh, my website, paulglovercoaching.com and the, the information about the workshop will be there. Uh, and it's a, it's a brand new venture. Uh, I, like I said, I've used it extensively, used the elements of it extensively in my coaching practice with my clients, but, but I felt that it, it needed at first it needs a work. It has a workbook. And I believe that that it, and also the, the concept of having an action plan so that the, the deal is you take the workbook and you can work with anyone you want to. Obviously, if you already have a coach, you have someone you can set this action plan up so that you go through the steps necessary to obviously realize the need for a fool, set up the psychological safety, find the fool go through the process of them telling you, reflecting. And then, like I said, the last thing is you need to then say, now I'm going to reach out and I'm going to, I'm going to pay it forward, right? Mm -hmm. The vet benefit that I get has got to be paid forward. If that doesn't happen, then I really believe that it's an interesting concept, but not, a, not an idea worth sharing, it really isn't. Yeah. Uh, and, and by the way, the elements of being a fool is something that's included in the workshop, because when you go looking for someone, you obviously respect is fine, uh, but you also they also have to have the ability to to communicate with you in a way that makes sense so that you will understand what you need to do next. Mm -hmm. It's really I, I love the, the example that you gave of your wife. Well, I feel like it's, it's so perfect because she immediately expressed the wisdom that indicates that she was going to be a great fool for you because she was like no because <laughs> i know you and then she came back and you worked out together a structure a plan right. for that again that will actually buffer and create the psychological safety for her to be able to give the full feedback the real power of it that you needed in order to grow and i love that and this, I, 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 I connect with this very much because that moment where you realize someone has said something that basically steps on one of your triggers or sets you off and that defensiveness that rises up, like you almost feel like bile rising or like heartburn, even though it feels different as it's coming up. And that I, one thing I've learned is to have those circuit breakers in place where it's just like, oh, oh, oh cut it down, cut the power, yep. step away, because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have a reaction that I don't want to have but that's in me and I can't ignore that it's there. And that's where a fool comes in so handy is an understatement comes in so valuable and so impactful because having somebody who could see it, they have the perception and the wisdom and the knowledge of you personally, as well as just how life goes to be able to see things and say things in a way that's going to connect with you. It's going to get to you. And by getting to you inherently means it's probably going to touch you in some sensitive places. Oh. And when you touch something in a sensitive place, there tends to be a reaction. It's a fairly natural human process. You, you know, whack me very gently with a hammer on my knee in the right spot and I'll kick, you know, there, there's, there are reflexes here, there, and everywhere, acknowledging them, understanding them and engaging them in a wise way. I know, I know I keep throwing the word wisdom out there. I think it's on my mind because we're using the term fool as a nice framework to discuss this too. And those things go hand in hand in this scenario, which is something I love about it. It's just, it's such a, it is such an important process to engage in all the, the all the way through each step up to and including and this i gotta say 
I love that you made sure to clear out and make this a core tenant of this of this process that becoming a fool for someone else. You're not it's not finished. I mean, it's never done because you're constantly engaged in this process, but you naturally will find a way to give this foolishness, quote unquote, back to someone else because you've seen the value for yourself, you've experienced it. And that's that is the natural expression of this process. I'm there's so much more to say, but I'm just I'll let you I'll let you go oh, for a little but, while. But, I but, love this. No, but you're spot on with us because uh, we, we, once you recognize the value, and I've given this, I've given a presentation with the workshop, and uh, what I found interesting afterwards were were the number of people who responded so well to it that it convinced me that this was something worth sharing, idea worth sharing. But mm -hmm. but it actually a couple of teams, three or four people came up to me afterwards as, as a team, a group, and said, "We are now committed to being each other's fool in our teamwork mm -hmm. professionally." Because they said we we need to have this this idea the psychological safety so that we can share and and opine and observe and make each other better so that the team becomes better and mm -hmm. it was so I guess I'd always thought individually but the concept of a team being able to do this and creating that psychological safety is truly I think a, a base element of high performance. Because you eliminate so many issues if you're able to do that with each other, right? You you trust each other, you respect each other, and when you see somebody starting to do the wrong thing, the ability to help them course correct by pointing it out in a way that they will find it acceptable is is huge. And that way, they were they they said not only will we have a fool, but we'll we'll be a fool immediately. So they had combined them into the same relationship. And I thought, now that is, that was something I had not thought about. That is really cool. Um, it really is. A professional it, point of view. And it is, it, I, think you're, I think you're spot on in identifying it as really the key to unlock the highest level of performance with a, with a team. Because if you have that capacity within your team, within your construct, to be able to be that kind of, to be able to, and I'll, I'll use this term loosely to wear that hat for each other when the time calls for it to put on the quote unquote jester's hat, you know, with the bells and everything that I got in my head um, to be able to do that for each other in real time and to have that level of trust and respect and openness and also everyone united by a common goal. So no one's every, everyone's got the reps. They've got the practice. They've, they've learned the techniques and they've identified their trigger spots and they've been open about sharing them. And that, I just imagine that those those times in my life where I've been in a team scenario where we had something even close to that level of interconnectedness, especially in the context of being a, like being each other's fool, mm -hmm. that's those are some of the moments of the highest achievement of my entire life. And I, I remember them fondly, although I've never necessarily identified them exactly in this way, which is what I love about this framework is it helps to shift my perspective just a tiny bit on things that I thought I already knew but it allows me to kind of look back and understand or look into the present and understand better the way in which I'm engaging with certain people and the way in which they're engaging with me and how that could be improved or even just like up, up leveled by just, you know, an engagement with a sort of, with a sort with a sort of fool's demeanor and like identifying people in my life for whom I've been that in the past and never really called it that, but have definitely been like, a, a, this is not the same thing, but in my head kind of as like a, not parallel, but sort of a related concept is the devil's advocate, which serves a very different purpose, I think, but is related in that there's there's a there's something served there by giving you giving you a different perspective, something that you can't get on your own, but need in order to go where you want to go. I like that. The devil's advocate is an aspect of it. Absolutely not the same, but truly a part, it's a part and parcel of a process that you can in, employ and yeah it, it to me is i don't know i i believe i truly do believe it's transformative mm -hmm. uh and we're gonna we'll find out once i give the, the ted talks out there i guess we'll find <laughs> out how many people actually uh connect to this concept but yeah the uh the the it worked for me and by the way i i am a recovering lawyer uh absolutely uh a tough sell, believe me. You telling me <laughs> I'm wrong immediately creates debate. It does not. It doesn't create listening necessarily. It creates debate, and so yeah, I had uh, I I was a, a hard case, and I right now I operate with uh, four different fools in my life. Mm. My wife remains a fool, but I've got 
two people that I rely upon, and we often call them coaches or mentors, uh, I, can, I apply the name fool for my professional life because it's interesting that how committed I can become to a specific path or a goal hmm. and without and not and not even think about talking to anybody else about does this make sense or is this an approach uh, which hmm. is silly I mean it really is but but I, I you know the, that self-confidence is overconfidence in me and, and I need to slow it down and I need to get an outside perspective because I am so focused on this is what I want to do and I've already decided this is how I'm going to do it. And to defer me from that requires a fool because I'll just blunder right on and, and, you know, make the mistakes and do all the bad things and then be upset about the failure that follows it. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a pre precursor to success for me. It, it forces us to do the things we don't want to do, put our ideas or concepts in front of somebody. And, and the reason we don't do that is we know that there's something wrong with it, or we're afraid they're going to say, don't do that, or it's mm -hmm. wrong. And by the way, uh, it doesn't mean that necessarily you have to follow that advice, but you at least need to hear it. Mm -hmm. Because you should, should then walk away from that conversation and then do the self-reflection. But I've often found that I'll put a course of action together that I think is spot on. And, and then I'm, I, I, there's a reluctance in putting it out in front of someone for them to tell me that it's not going to work. I've gotten over that. <laughs> I, 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 I trust the, the, my fools implicitly. Uh, and we have that relationship. And uh, it serves me well. There's two things that you just said that I really I really responded to. In, in addition to everything else I'm responding to, there was one where you said, you use the term slowing it down or you said slow it down. And that's something that a lot of people get afraid of too when it comes to this kind of feedback is there's, you have what you think of as a good idea, a good project, a good notion, a good some, something that you're just like really excited about. And that excitement creates a sort of momentum yeah. that can be a little scary just in and of itself. It could be scary to consider slowing that down. And some people are just like, let's go, let's move fast. Let's get in there, let's do it. And slowing down feels like feels like right next door to stopping and you don't want to stop. But slowing down, I, I'm trying to think of exactly how to say it. It's, it's said, I hear it in a number of different ways, but slow is steady and steady is fast. is something I hear quite a bit. I think I get that from, you know, like military thinkers and whatnot. And I find variations on that concept to be very valuable because steady, especially the steady is fast part. Sometimes it really is the right call to slow it down a little bit. It, you're not going to stop. You're not going to lose anything. And just like, let, let other people see what you're thinking, what you're doing, where you're going. Cause for example, if you're, if you're trying to go really far, if you make a one degree change to your course, it's not going to seem like very much, but the farther you go down that road, the more of a difference it's going to make on where you arrive. And getting that feedback, getting that, getting that fool's perspective, that slight shift that you need, or maybe major shift that you need early is so crucial to arriving on target where you want to be going. And it's it can be difficult to see it that way when you're in the in the flush of that momentum of something that you're excited about that you're like, this is it, this is it. <laughs> well, <laughs> first, you're absolutely right. And, and that's how I that that's how I react to a good idea, right? I'm immediately ready to go. And I've, I've finally come, I'm able to now look at it and say, only so much time, only so much energy, only so many resources. And I need to make sure that every one of those is spent correctly. Mm -hmm. The only way I can do that is to make sure that I get that outside perspective that I always ignored before, just believing I knew. Uh, and, and perhaps it comes with some age of saying, at some point you realize that the 4,000 weeks is now a thousand weeks. And <laughs> rather than just stumble on, uh, you know, I, I, I equate the way I used to work is I would be in a black room trying to find the light switch. Hmm. And it's much easier to have somebody who turns on the light for you. And that's how I equate it is, is, is if I ask the people I respect who know me well enough, and I say, is this something I should be doing? And it's interesting because I, I we, we always know what we want to do. We often don't know what we should not do. Ooh. And I put on, uh, I actually have uh, at the beginning of the year, I do a couple of things on my wall. And one of them is called, called Via Negativity. 
being successful today means identifying what I should not do and then not doing it. Because I'm really good at, at identifying all the things that I want to do. The question is, should I do them? And this mm. is where the filter reacts really well to the question. Yeah. And they go, I know you, and I know what you keep telling me you want, and I'm looking at what you just said to me, and I want you to say, is this, or I want you to consider, is this what you should do? And requiring that thought process from someone I respect absolutely stops me from doing things that are not focused on what I want the outcome to be. And by, and by the way, that again, we're, I'm talking about, it's, it sounds like coaching, but it's, it goes at a different level. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. It's, it's sometimes just, just the asking of the question is the answer Bingo. because it, because it because it engages that process. You're, you're spot on with that because once somebody points out the blind spot or the trigger, you're like, oh, no, oh. <laughs> exactly. that's why I was doing that. Uh, and by the way, you, you be, you, that adds to self-awareness mm -hmm. that, that you can, you cannot get that on your own. So it adds to your self-awareness, which makes you better able not to react that way whenever it happens again. And you learn from the experience, but without the uh, without that perspective, not going to happen. Speaking of perspective, I just looked up at the clock and realized we've already been talking for a half an hour. <laughs> it's already been a half an hour. That could have been five uh, minutes. Uh, it could. Okay, I mean, it, it could, it, I don't know how much long it was, but this is delightful. I'm really excited by this. This is really great. Before I I let you go and get on with your day, <laughs> um, obviously, yeah, what was it paulglovercoaching.com is your is your main website. It's where to find if, if people want to learn more about you in general, this workshop specifically, the TEDx yep. talk, anything else you're up to, that's the place to go? That's the place to go. Okay, that's perfect. And obviously, you're active on LinkedIn. I think it's where we met the oh, first yeah. time anyway. Now, at this point, yes. now we're just, we're just pod friends. <laughs> yes, we are. Uh, oh, Paul, this is this is delightful. I, I yeah, I could definitely keep you all day, but I think we've both got some other some other stuff to get to. But okay. I'll be I'll be bugging you for a part four, oh. probably in a few months. Maybe maybe come maybe as maybe as the summer starts to get closer and closer, we can come on for a for a mid year check in and just see how things have progressed. I would Absolutely. love that. Absolutely, I can't wait. Uh, I, I enjoy it so much. You uh, you 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 basically uh, you trigger me in a good way. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know. so, Kevin, thank you so much. Oh, it's truly my pleasure. And to the audience, this is your third time listening. I mean, if, if it's not your third time listening, first of all, go back and get the other couple of episodes. It's right after that, check out Paul. Get on, get him on LinkedIn, connect with him, check him out. Obviously, you know he's got the goods. And quite frankly, he's an absolute delight. That's just my biased opinion, but I'm sharing it with you. I'm sure you'll share it yourself soon enough. And we will talk to you again very soon.